Get insider tips to avoid top mistakes that can derail new podcasters. From tech fails to awkward interviews, learn how to confidently find your voice, pick the right gear, outsource what slows you down, and most importantly, serve your audience. This episode gives actionable ways to amplify your impact and build your personal brand through podcasting. Welcome to the Podcasting Secrets Show, where successful creators share their best stories, secrets, and strategies. I'm your host, Nathan Gwilliam. Hello, incurable creators. Thanks for joining me for this episode with Ramon Ray. Ramon is the publisher of Zone of Genius, and I promise you, you are going to love this episode. Thanks for being with us today, Ramon. Nathan, you're welcome, man. It's always good hanging out with you, being here with you. Thank you for your service to the world and the podcasting community and beyond. So I hope your family is well. My family is doing pretty good, and it's good to be here today. Yes, I hope your family is well, too. Thank hope you. Hope your holidays are filled with lots of memories with the people that you love. They are. They are. So, Ramon, will you start off by sharing with us your journey, your specifically your podcasting journey? Yeah, as far as I can remember... <laughs> My journey has been really, how can I serve? That's the bottom line. That's the journey. And I've done iterated a variety of podcasts, a variety of types. Um, even though I know your podcasting, podcasting focus, I want to tell people something that they may not like to hear. I don't consider myself a podcaster. And for you new people, I think it's okay. We'll see what Nathan has. We may have the first yeah, podcast I'd ever on Nathan's show. But my point is, why I say that? Some people, I'm a blogger. I'm a vlogger. I'm a video person. You know, I'm, I'm a business owner and I want to help people. I want to build a community. I want to serve, right? I want to blah, 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 blah. One of the vehicles I do that is podcasting. So my journey has been, I had a podcast with smarthustle.com and that was one of my media ventures and we interviewed small business owners. I sold that. I uh, had a podcast with smallbiztechnology.com, my earlier blog, and I sold that. Uh, and today I run zoneofgenius.com and I'm building that community, building that company. And part of that uh, is something called the rundown with Ramon. So variety of iterations and versions of podcasting, which to me just means a conversation with somebody else or a panel or a solo. You can do yep. podcasting different ways and uh, providing good, good content, most importantly, to your audience. I love it. So you see yourself as a content creator and an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, first and foremost, yes, who uses content for part of my business. That's correct. Yes. That's right. I love that. What is the most challenging thing that you have gone through in your journey and how did you get through it? Wow. As, as podcasting or like as a human? Because those are, I mean, you made me start crying, man. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll stick to podcasting. Wherever you want to go with that question. I'll, I'll stick it to, I'll stick everything to podcasting unless told otherwise. I'm um, challenging part of the journey. Um, I think it's all been fun. It's all been a journey. So, you know, I think challenges is how we think of it. But I think especially for those out there figuring it out, sometimes it can be challenging just to know what equipment to have. <laughs> you know, like, wow, wow, how do I get the mic to work? Should I not do this? Should I do this? Should I use tools like we're using today or other tools? That can be one, the technical challenge. I think two is uh, finding your voice, knowing what you want your show to be like. Nathan's show is going to be different than my show. My show is going to be different than Nathan's show. So I think that can be a second challenge, just knowing where do I fit in the world? Ooh, I hear Joe Rogan. Yeah. His is like this. Ooh, I hear Tim Ferriss. His is like this. What is mine going to be like? That's okay. It can be you. So that's number two. Um, number three, I think for sure, is the challenge of the production. You know, once it's done, what happens? Do you have a whole yeah. uh, all digital those moving drawer? Part. Yes, of stuff. So those are three challenges I can think about. One, I actually had a fourth one, Nathan, is I think, you know, when you're first starting out, oh, I want to interview Oprah. I want to interview Barack or Trump. <laughs> Calm down, puppy. Slow down a bit. So I yeah. hope that was helpful. All right. So let's go through those really quick. Those four sure. that you just mentioned. What are your best secrets, your secret sauce that has helped you to, to get through those four challenges? Yeah, I think technical, knowing that it will be imperfect. Listen to it after you've done it, you know, so that that is, is out. And never have to worry about that too much again. Always going to have issues. Even I'm sure Nathan, the best of the best. Oops, what am I doing? Why don't my headphones work this time? But we usually solve it within seconds, you know. Um, but I think the technical part, your first one, two, three, or four, just like driving a car, learning how to use the bathroom as a kid, it's going to be kind of messy. No pun intended. So that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, number two, 
finding your voice, I think that's really the most important thing. I find that some of the worst podcast people, Nathan, you know, I've been on some shows. Hey, so Nathan, what are we going to talk about? You see, it says record, it's running. Like, oh, so what are we going to do? Like, no, you, that's, think of your audience. If you're going to do this, do this right. However it is. So I think finding your voice and don't just thinking of it as a, you know, just it's in your living room. In a way it is, but like be professional about it. That's number two. So how do you get over that? Really understand what you're trying to do. As far as the interview part, Nathan, very few people are going to get Oprah Winfrey, the proverbial, whatever the big dog is. Start with those who provide some cachet, maybe hidden gems, and then go from there. So those are a few answers I hope I gave to some of the problems. So your answers raised a question. Like, it seems when I talk to a lot of podcasters, they are, they're not extremely confident. They, they doubt their ability to pick the right equipment. They doubt their ability to get the right guests. They doubt their ability to create a quality episode. And, and they doubt their ability to be able to take care of all the necessary details to be successful. Um, you come off as supremely confident and capable. Did you ever doubt yourself when you started this? Unfortunately, or unfortunately, one of my strong points is competence, Nathan. So that could be with your hearing. I have a lot of weak areas. Like I don't spell well. You know, I have a lot of <laughs> other issues that'll be, I'll start tearing up like on demand, Nathan. <laughs> but I do. That's just me. I'm, I'm my son's dad. You think you could do anything, don't you? Uh, yeah, I do. Not because not I'm all that. It's just like Ramon, you know, build the Eiffel Tower, chat GPT. Who built the Eiffel Tower? Oh, Fred. He lives in Arkansas. I'm driving to Arkansas, going to hire Fred. I'm going to build me the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah. So my point, Nathan, that's what you're hearing. But for those who feel a bit of that stuff, you, you're going to fail. You're going to have a two-hour episode with Nathan, and you're going to have forgot to hit record. 99.9% <laughs> of the people are nice people. Nathan's going to be mildly frustrated like, okay. <laughs> Okay, you forgot to record. Don't ask him I've to done do that me. before, by the right. way. I know you had to, Nathan. You've had to. Me too. Nathan's not going to smile necessarily and say, sure, let's just do it again. Six months later, three months later, you know, you put that Mr. Nathan in your voice. Um, Mr. Nathan's assistant. I know I interviewed Nathan six months ago. I took good notes. From memory, I did put a good blog post together. If, if people can't see this, I'm j just, you know, I'm gesturing that salvage what <laughs> you can. You want to do that. And then could we do a follow up? Because honestly, it didn't record. So I have what we said. It, I didn't waste your time, Nathan, but I'd love to do a follow up with you. 99.9% .9 of the time, all of us, me, Nathan and others, we're going to say yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. It's rolling with it. So you were talking about you believe you can do anything. And, and there's a term for that. It's called self-efficacy, right? You, can, you know you can do hard things. And that's one of the most important things that we can teach kids. I've seen some interesting research on that. A lot of people think suicide is very directly related to, to depression, um, but it's more closely related to self-efficacy, right? Do we know we can do hard things? And if we want to help our kids from... from help prevent suicide with people we love, one of the best things we can do is help develop that self-efficacy. Teach them that innate belief in them that whatever challenge they face, they can get through it. They can figure right. it out. They can go use ChatGPT or Google or whatever and, and um, figure out how to build the Eiffel Tower there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's talk about embarrassing moments for a minute. You, so you, you talked about um, how you and I have both not hit record and gone through an interview. That, that was so bad. I was so mortified with that. Absolutely. That may be one of the worst. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what some of the other most embarrassing moments are that you've had. I'll, I'll tell you two that come sure. to my interview with my podcast. So one is I had, I had a guest on my show who was the, I think if I don't say his name, I can tell you where he worked for. Yeah. But like he was don't one of the top name. video guys at Apple. And I had him on my show and we we're talking about video marketing and like in the app, one of the Apple's top videographers and I had just gotten my new backdrop and Dang. I didn't really know how to put it together. And so I put the backdrop together and then afterwards I realized that it looked like this like wrinkled sheet was up behind me. Like I totally messed it up. It was horrible, horrible backdrop. And um, I don't know, just have someone of that caliber and to me, 
me flub my presentation. That was bad. Or second one, I got John Lee Dumas to agree to be a, to enter. It's a big get in our world. That's yeah. big as you can get. That's a really big get. Yeah. And, and my internet connection kept dropping. Like I'm here with him. I have very limited time that he's willing to give me. And I just look so unprofessional with my internet connection not working. To the king of podcast, you know, hey, yes, you want to come and cook with me, Chef Ramsey? And I burn the eggs, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have since upgraded. I mean, the good news is that you fix them, right? Each, each problem that happens, right. you look at it and say, okay, um, I assess, you know, when something bad happens. I'm the kind of guy that, like, I drive through a yellow light and I'm looking back in the rearview mirror to say, okay, when did it turn red? And, like, oh. how far away was I from doing it? So that I, I'm, I'm constantly assessing my decisions. And so in a, in a problem like that with John Lee Dumas, you know, and bad internet connection, I've switched to Starlink and I have a much better, more reliable internet connection in rural Idaho than what I, I had before. So I guess that's the advantage of embarrassing mistakes is you have a chance to improve if, if we're willing so that they never happen again. Yeah, no, you're right. I think for me, embarrassing mistakes. I think one I could mention, I haven't, thankfully, I haven't had too many, not because I'm so right. It's just, you know, this is a mature technology. You do it, you know, and hopefully, the, or, the, or it's so small, I don't think about it, right? Because confidence. So, um, but yeah. I think that I just a few weeks, then a few years ago, recently, I was at NetSuite World and I don't think it was the CEO. I probably was just a customer, I think. Either way, I had recorded three times, and this was some video. Record it three times, and I think it's for, I forgot to turn it on or I had the mic off three times in a row. Now, I didn't go on long. I just had to stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot this. Now, part of it, Nathan, I probably should have spent some money, hired a guy or gal to do all that for me. But you know how it is. you know. And I say you know how it is because you and I are probably two peas of a similar pod. Yeah. Flying to a conference, got your kit with you. I'm not going to pay 500, a couple hundred, whatever it is. Even though I could, didn't want to do it there. So... I did it myself. And, you know, I'm out of, I, I can do a lot of things. You know, we're techie, but video and the camera and trying to get stuff up. You it's forget a lot of one of the part. 50. That's right. One of the 55 buttons. So, but they forgave me. I laughed and, but they never forgot because they came last year and the PR person was like, are you recording this time remote? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm recording. But, but I think a that's good smile, not being, not being a jerk and, and that humility, anything like that goes a long way. You know, okay. Any other embarrassing moments you want to share with us? I think I'll stop there. I could, I can do embarrassing <laughs> moments about beyond podcasting, going to at CES with what ten zillion people it seems, going up and asking Michael, uh, asking Michael Dell for an interview. I didn't know the real bloggers at the time were behind the stage and in the press area. I was just starting out. I had my little pass. I was with the people, so I'm like, Mister Dell. He walked away, not in a bad way. You know, if he ever sees this, and I've been on stage with him before, but just you know, he has his handlers and people who guide him what to do. So things like yes. that. I emailed Walt Mosberg, Wall Street Journal reporter, very famous many years ago. I think I faxed him, which is how long ago it was or something. He said, how'd you get my fax number? Your website's so ugly and it's in the wrong industry. <laughs> I would never cover you anyhow. So, you know, we've all had our moments. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, the cool thing that helps me in those situations is what we've is got to find our people. Not, not everybody are our people, right? You're going to say the same message and to 20 people and you're going to have three of them that are annoys and they're going to be, you know, think but, you're a, a scam. And then, you're, you know, you're going to have 10 of those people that they're going to love you and yeah. and become fans. And, and you just got to find your people. Don't worry yeah. about pleasing everybody. That's right. And I think the more targeted you are also, Nathan, talking about the, getting the interview, you know, things like, hey, can I interview you for my podcast? We get that a dime a dozen. But, you know, hey, Nathan. I'm Ramon Ray, been watching some of your podcast. I saw you interviewed so-and-so last week. You talked about this. I'd love to interview as well. Could you help? Can I interview you about X, Y, Z when you have a moment? I guarantee something like that, 99% yes. You've given them an out. Doesn't have to be today. You sound legitimate. Sound like it's targeted right to them. Even if it wasn't, you're going to get a yes. Yeah. Okay. One of the first things you were talking about um, in our interview was, was finding the right equipment. Is there one piece of equipment that you would like to recommend that you just love in podcasting you'd like to share with us? Well, well, this is beyond podcasting directly, but I have a Zoom P4, which I don't know if I want to hold it up here. Zoom P4, a little, little, little doohickey. People will be able to see it from here. Um, it basically, okay. it's a four-channel mixer. You may know what it is more than me because you may be more techy, more uh, Nathan. I'm not sure. But Zoom P4, I think you got a Zoom P4 mixer, four-channel mic input, output, 
You can control the volume and things like that. So I like that's one tool. But in addition, I'll just go on. You know, good mic, whatever the brand is, take your pick. I'm sure Nathan and his team uh, can help you with those things. Um, yeah, good mic and and a good pair of headphones. I have my audio my audio out there on speakers, but sometimes you can hear it better. You know, just a little crisper to the ear. But Zoom B4 is what I'd recommend. I've noticed a lot of people are going with the the wireless earbuds mm -hmm. instead of the the headsets. Do you have a preference or a recommendation? Yeah, those? for the wireless earbuds, this I'm with friends and I've tested it many times before. So, you know, let me, bottom line, wireless works. It's just, I, I can't trust that they sound perfect, even though I think they do. And I don't like the two pieces that's falling out or losing it. So that's just me, you know, these headphones, even though they're kind of yeah. big. I, this image, I like it. I can I can live with it. You know, it does, I don't yeah. have the thing, you know, so, but yeah, wireless you works for like sure. Podcaster. Thank you. <laughs> And sometimes I don't. I do have the in-ear uh, headset types. These are what I use for some things when I'm doing my show. But the only reason I have these because the Zoom P4, these are wired to the Zoom P4. These yeah. are not wired to it. These are, you know, larger wireless ones. Yeah, I actually prefer the wired to the wireless ones. Still safer. Maybe that's the old school in me. Yeah. yeah. Now, I wouldn't have the wire okay. one. Like in this case, I wouldn't want the wire running down here. That's just me like running if you could see it. So those are wired yeah, back of neck, as you probably saw, back of neck. And, you know, svelte, I think the word is S-V-E-L-P-E. -E. So. <laughs> All right. Um, can you teach us something? Um, can you take some strategy that has been instrumental in your success, something you think could help our audience, and maybe take a step-by-step -step through teaching us how to do something? Yeah, absolutely. Nathan, remind us uh, your service. I, again, I should have it in my head. Bring it up. But can you remind us the name of your service one more time? Hot up. P O D U P. Yeah, that's right. Here's what I'm going to lead into this. Understand what you're trying to accomplish. You can do everything yourself, and you probably should start out doing that for a day or two or two minutes. <laughs> you can do everything yourself. And I, I'm a firm believer, Nathan, you know, honestly, that people should try and do. I, when I did my own events, I wanted to understand the staging and food. I didn't do it all, but meaning I wanted to get my hands a bit dirty. So when I, as I grew, so my point being, if you're doing this and you're building a business on it, outsource it to pot up, outsource everything you can let do. The only thing you should do, move your mouth, do a darn good interview. Everything else, let somebody do. And one of those somebodies should be pot up. So I'm not saying that just because Nathan's here, but I think it's important that if you really want to do this, outsource as much as you can to somebody else. Uh, let somebody else do it for you. Um, so that's one thing. Um, other th teaching moment I think I can give is the aspect of the interview. Um, for those of you who are new to this, understand it's not about you. To a degree, you can be engaging, do what you want, but you hear this interview with me and Nathan. I'm talking, I don't know what the percentage, 80% of the time, as it should be. He's asking me questions. Here to answer. So, But I've had some interview, Nathan's, where I'm like, Here's how, and Nathan, you're going to be, I'm going to be the podcaster. You're the interviewee now, okay? <laughs> Ready? I'm going to flip the switch for two minutes. May I do that real quick, okay? Ready? Yes, please. So, so Nathan, um, what kind of color shirt do you have? Well, from what I can see, Nathan, it's a black shirt. You know what? When I was growing up in Mississippi, my great-great-grandmother, <laughs> she, <laughs> you know where I'm going, Nathan, right? It's like, yeah. you asked the man a question. <laughs> now you're well, doing that. Well, so, you know, so you, that's my. Learn, be a good podcaster. And most of us can, Nathan, but have dialogue. It's okay to give you, and I think that's another art. You should give your opinion. In this case, Nathan, he's the expert. I'm on his show, if you get what I mean. So he should engage and give his thoughts. So it's a balance though, but you don't want to listen to it and realize, oh, my guest hardly spoke. That's not cool. I don't know if they'll ever be on a time where I'm on a show with you and I'm the expert. I think you'll always be the expert. You don't know about that either. <laughs> but I'll say thank you and I'll accept that. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about what you're doing now, this current sure. venture that you're doing, this Zone of Genius project? Um, sure. What are you doing there, and, and how can that help our listeners? Absolutely. What we're looking to do is help small business owners and entrepreneurs live their best life personally and grow their businesses. So Zone of Genius, we cover money, marketing, mindset, and business growth. Think about Inc., entrepreneur, give homage to them. They cover the world of small business, and that's what we do. So that's zoneofgenius.com, blogs and articles and content. Second thing that just launched, breaking news on the Nathan Pot Up show, is <laughs> zone, zoneofgeniusexperts.com, a free, as of today, marketplace of curated experts 
So not everybody can join for referral, but zoneofgeniusexperts.com is where people can go and um, add their listing to be an expert and or find somebody to help them in their business. So that's what I'm building, the thumbtack, the Airbnb of uh, experts. Okay, so Ramon, yes, we match. Uh, this is a great book, The Celebrity CEO, and I recommend everybody get it and read it. Um, so for the customers that sign up for PodUp, our software, um, most of them would identify themselves as an entrepreneur or a CEO. They're running a business of some type. Um, so at the beginning, you said you wouldn't call yourself a podcaster. What would you call yourself? Sure. Well, three things, meaning to be clear, podcasting is one very, very important vehicle that's a part of my marketing and brand building. To be yep. clear, it's just I my distinction I prefer is publisher zoneofgenius.com because that builds my entity, builds what I'm doing. Yep. And or the higher level, I realize I'm an entrepreneur because yep. I have an itch to solve problems. I buy, build, sell. I'll do that until I die. Okay, so why would an entrepreneur like you or like me want to be a celebrity CEO? Ah, uh, that's a great question. So the reason why you'd want to be a celebrity CEO, in my humble opinion, is because we small business owners, we as our personal brands, Nathan Ramon and millions of others, we can be and oftentimes are the biggest asset to our corporate brands. You think about Becky, who's the owner of the local landscaping company. Think about Jim, who's the CEO of a local tax planning services. Jim has three staff, four staff, or it's just him or just her. She or he is the biggest asset to that brand. They're shaking hands. They're talking to people. They're meeting people. They're on boards. They're on panels. They're getting out there. Building your personal brand is such an asset. The events you can do, the, the, the books you can do, the podcasts you can create. That's why building a brand, being a celebrity CEO of your brand is so important because you, your personality, your personification is one of the biggest ambassadors for your business is you. And podcasting is a great vehicle to get that done. Yeah. And by doing that, you become a thought leader in your space. You build yeah. relationships with, with people who may be followers um, who get to know you and That's like right. you and trust you. Um, so many businesses today, they, they get a lead. They get an, e an email address, right? And they immediately go for the sale. They go for the close, right? And that's kind of like meeting, meeting a pretty girl, you know, immediately asking her to marry you, right? That's right. It, it doesn't work that way. You, you got to build a relationship. You got to take her on some dates. You got to provide value there. You got to get her to know you, like you, right. and trust you. And same thing is true in business. A lot of businesses are being far more successful today <laughs> by providing great value before they sell. And That's by right. being a celebrity CEO, by, by providing that value out there, um, you have a chance to do that ever before you have to try to make the sale. That's right. It's so important. So important. That personal human connection that I came and talked, Nathan, called human connections in a digital world. And it's so, so important. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What are the three most important takeaways from this book about how we could be celebrity CEOs? Sure. I'm a firm believer in asking people to build communities before they try to sell and or set a different way. Ask for a smile before you ask for a sale. That's number one. Number two, the power of building trust the power of educating people. So many times we think it's about the sale, 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 but I'm a firm believer, educate, 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 educate. Build relationships. Before I get Nathan's money, let me build a relationship. Let me build trust with him. That's number two. Number three, I'm a firm believer in pop, in sizzle, in a cachet. Doesn't mean everybody has to look as good as Nathan, as Nathan or Ramon. I get it. But it does mean there's gotta be some cachet. You look at my business cards, Nathan. As an example, and again, yes, I, I have a company, but I'm building the brand Ramon Ray as well. These are my business cards. Yeah, waiting to see the business cards, right? You're like, show them, Ramon, show them. They're coming. Don't yeah. worry, people. So, <laughs> so oh, that's my business fun. cards. Yeah. So meaning that's me, and it may not be for everybody, but meaning that's one way that you can build that brand is by showcasing who you are, showcasing how you're different, showcasing what's special about you. So that's one aspect of building one's personal brand. Yeah. I love it. So some CEOs that I've talked to, they're really reluctant to kind of step into yeah. this celebrity CEO space because they think it's kind of like arrogant. They think it's maybe Kim Kardashian. Of, you know, they, I, I, I shouldn't use her it name because I'm she's probably not arrogant, but they think they're like doing it to, to you know, glory hounding yes. or something. It is. Um, 
<laughs> Meaning, how do you? I'm not going to run dressed? from it. Meaning, I get what they mean. It's a pejorative. But think about this. I mean, I guess I get the point. But you're and let's let's make it difficult for me. Make up one of your clients or name of a an industry or a type of business. Throw another one. I I use cupcakes accounting. Give me another one. <laughs> yeah. How about CEO of a podcasting company? Okay, fine. CEO. That's too easy, Nathan. But I'll take it. Okay. CEO of a podcast <laughs> company. The podcast company name, like Spotify, can be known well, and we don't know who founded it. We don't give a darn. Great. Spotify has spent billions and trillions and millions, and I believe they're losing money to build that brand, that that uh, inhuman, non-touchable, non-smiling brand. However, a CEO of a podcast company, Pod Up Nathan, hey, I'm Nathan, how are you? He can connect. He can shake hands. He can be on panels. He can do a podcast. He can write a book. He yeah. can do an event. He can do webinars. He can have that warm, fuzzy feeling to draw people in. And as you grow, other people can build can be your brand ambassadors. My friend Scott Simons, uh, he's uh, the, the uh, owner of several dealerships in Virginia called Carter Myers Automotive, doing that under the leadership of Liza Borshis, a 100-year-old company. He encourages himself, he started it, and his team be personal brand ambassadors. Take pictures when you sell a car. Post it on Facebook. Give them your personal phone number. You be a walking personal billboard for this brand. Yeah, you you look at some CEOs that have done this really well. I think like Elon Musk is yeah. probably the best example, right? If you went and asked 100 adults in America, you know, who's the CEO of Tesla, right. probably 90 of them could answer that question right. and correctly. And, and then you ask that same group, who's the CEO of Ford today? And, and I don't know the answer to that question. I bet you one, maybe, yeah. or two could and answer. And they'd probably be in the car industry. <laughs> that's, that's right. And because he's built the, his celebrity CEO yeah. status, you know, he was able to build Tesla with almost no paid advertising, right. you know, very, very minimal advertising. It's a, it's a leverageable asset. What are some of the other benefits of being a celebrity CEO? Yeah, I think the other benefit is you don't have to run from lowering your price. Yes, people are price conscientious to some degree, but when you're the celebrity CEO, you have that cachet, that swag. People want to pay value. People want to pay a premium for it. That's one. Number two, you have customers chasing you. You don't have to worry about, you, you always have to prospect in some way, but customers know you, they want to come to you. Number three, you're much more trusted. He's a celebrity CEO. Oh, I trust this guy. Oh, I, I feel like I know this guy. Those are three huge yeah. benefits of being the celebrity CEO. Okay. Ramon, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with our audience. Um, if our listeners and watchers uh, would like to know more about you and your services, what are the best ways for them to do that? They should go to zoneofgenius.com, zoneofgenius.com, where we will send them a cool email to help them grow their business and more. Perfect. Thank you very much. And again, I hope you have a very happy holidays with uh, lots of memories with those people that you love. I will. Okay, here's a few of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, Ramon's main focus is on serving others and building community, not just podcasting. He uses podcasting as one vehicle to accomplish his bigger goal. Number two, four challenges Ramon sees for new podcasters are technical issues, finding your unique voice, getting high-profile guests, and production and distribution. His tips for overcoming them include being patient as you learn, focusing on who you want to serve, start by interviewing lesser known but valuable guests, and outsourcing tasks you struggle with. Number three, Ramon believes confidence is key. Even when making mistakes that inevitably happen, being confident can help you handle challenges that move you forward productively. Number four, Embarrassing moments will happen to all podcasters, but having a sense of humor, not being a jerk, and showing humility goes a long way to recovering gracefully. Number five, good equipment amplifies your message rather than distorts it. Ramon recommends the Zoom P4 mixer, a good mic, and headphones you're comfortable wearing. Number six, outsource tasks to focus on high-level goals. Pod Up can help take podcast production and distribution off creators' plates. Number seven, interviewing is mainly about the guest. Ask good questions, then mostly listen rather than talk about yourself. And finally, number eight, building a personal brand as a business leader turns you into a walking billboard for your company. Podcasting can assist with that. If you're looking for a great all-in-one podcasting platform with 35 integrated modules, you can get a free trial at podup.com.
Thanks for joining us for this episode. I wish you success as you grow your podcast and your personal brand.